Hi there, Fiddler Dan here, and today I want to show you the Makers 2 series of violins. Uh, these are violins that come from, uh, from China by a, a small family. In fact, it's a husband and wife team. And the reason that's important is a lot of violins that come from China are, are made in factories where people are working on different elements. And so there's no one maker looking over the whole process. But this violin is made by uh, by a single maker or a husband and wife maker team. So that means the whole of the violin is just a bit better integrated and I think you get um, a much better result in the sound uh, than you would um, from another, another violin that just comes out of a mass-produced factory. So uh, each one of these violins is, uh, is unique for that reason and they have three grades of uh, violin, A, B, and C. Uh, this is their A grade violin. So uh, let's have a um, let's have a closer look at that. So we've got um, a wonderful tight grain spruce for the top plate. Um, you can see here around the F holes there some evidence of uh, quite nice carving there, which you see on a on a better violin. Uh, of course, it's ebony throughout, and if we look up here, the scroll is another place where you can look at the skill of the maker, and um, that's quite a nice scroll, if, um, if, if a little plain. You can see here, um, with the maple used for the neck, there's, um, there's some light flame there, and um, not too much evidence of that flame up here to, to bring that out. Um, I guess that's a stylistic choice. Um, one thing I do like about it is a lot of Chinese instruments tend to be overly shiny. Um, this one is, is quite subdued. So um, it's a much more of a traditional instrument in that way. If we have a look at the back here, two-piece maple back, um, very, very tight um, tiger stripes there. And you can see that this... Um, this violin has been antiqued. So a lot of attention to detail has gone into the finish there to get that antique look. Antiquing is something of a, of a personal preference. And um, if you like it, that's great. It's certainly in vogue at the moment. And um, it's one way to make um, a violin quite individual because when you antique an instrument, uh, no two are gonna come out exactly the same and the ribs there. You can see the, the light flame there. For this instrument, when they're shipped, they come just just as they are body with the fingerboard and it's up to, um, it's up to whoever receives it to fit a, fit a bridge, choose a tailpiece uh, and so on. I've chosen to use a, a Despio um, one tree bridge here I think that's about right for this instrument and um, a bit of fiddling with the sound post in there to get the um, instrument sounding the way that I'd like, like it to sound. I've put on this um, Larson Virtuoso strings. They're more of a mellow string and I think that's in keeping with this, this instrument. It's not, to me, it's not an instrument <clears throat> that's made like so many um, Chinese instruments to be uh, the loudest voice in the room. Uh, it's got a bit more character to it, and I think these strings uh, really bring that out. So let's hear what it sounds like. Here's my marvellous uh, pentatonics again. like the bottom end on this it's um it's quite chewy and as we come up into the higher registers there's not that piercing uh, shrillness um it's got it's got a sweeter sound
how the uh, instrument uh, projects. I can see it's overlighting my mic a little bit, but just listen to the ring on the instrument. That sound just goes on forever. A beautiful ringing instrument uh, without the uh, shrillness that you sometimes get from instruments that come out of China. Um, lots of deep body behind that. This is the Makers 2A series in the Stradivari shape. Um, I, I quite like it and I'm quite pleased to have it in my shop as uh, something that people can, can choose and compare with some of the other <coughs> instruments, excuse me, to get the get the right mix for the sound that they're looking for. Um, when I look online, quite a few shops um, sell this. The critical element with this uh, instrument is to make sure that it's um, been set up uh, really well. The other thing with the Maker's Instruments is you'll see there's no label in there. So they sell that uh, so that uh, People that are on selling these as a, as a music store uh, can put their own label in there. And so um, while the Makers 2 doesn't have a, a brand per se, you may well see this instrument in music stores uh, under another label. So um, keep your eye open. I've seen it for sale in some shops at uh, incredibly high prices, uh, well above what I think it might take. To, to sell it uh, as, as it is. But a lot of that value comes in the choice of, of bridge and the accessories, the bow that it comes with and the case. So keep that in mind if you're looking at um, how much it is and comparing that between the stores. Uh, you're welcome, of course, to come and try it uh, with me. I'd, I'd love you to try that. And um, yeah, so the bare bones instrument is around 900. So by the time you've set that up and add some accessories, you could expect that to be anywhere from 1500 to, to 2000 or perhaps even higher, depending on what the retailer wants to sell that for. That's the Makers 2 series. Um, this is the A model, the highest grade instrument that they sell. And um, come give it a try. Thanks for listening. Bye.